We welcome you live from the arena in San Juan for the quarterfinals. This is day two of the quarterfinals of the 2014 Phil Oil Flying V Haynes Premier Cup. And we have two games on tap for all of you basketball fans live here on ABS-CBN Sports. And action in the first game, number two seeded FBU Tamaraos will take on the number seven seeds, De La Salle Green Archers. While in the second game today, San Beda Red Lions uh, seeded number four, taking on the fifth seeded National University Bulldogs. Magandang hapun po sa inyo lahat. Thank you for watching us on ABS-CBN Sports in Action. My name is Eric Kipan alongside Marco Bintes. And we will have the call for you for this game. And if you're wondering uh, how come that is the way it is, yung lineup po natin, it's been a long stretch of games between teams from all around the country. And uh, it's boiled down to this. Nagkaroon na po tayo ng day one of the quarterfinals last Monday. And uh, Marco will break it down for you uh, kung paano tayo makakarating sa finals with today, semifinals on Friday, and on Sunday, the big finals. That is correct, Eric. And you know, this tournament started with three brackets. Single round robin for each. We got the top two teams from each bracket and the top two number three seeds. And that is the reason why La Salle is in, in, uh, in this quarterfinals. They are facing FEU in that uh, last game on Monday. We had Southwestern University mm -hmm. defeating JRU and CEU also defeating Lyceum last Monday. Ly uh, CEU was led by Rodrigo Epon, who had uh, 11 points and 11 rebounds. Right now, you're watching on screen the, the game between CU and LPU. They were also led by Samboy De Leon, who had about 14 points in that ball game. Meanwhile, Southwestern University was led by Landry Sanjo, 19 points, 19 rebounds against JRU. So they eliminated the JRU in that first day of the quarterfinals. So Southwestern University will face the winner of this match today between FEU and La Salle. Meanwhile, CU, who ended up as the number one team at the end of the eliminations, will face the winner of our second game between San Beda and National University. And in case you're wondering, CEU finished with a 6-0 and o card, and they were tied with FEU, but by quotient, yes. uh, umangat sa number one seed, ang CEU. On the other hand, uh, SWU out of uh, Cebu finished third in the standings, and they beat uh, sixth-seeded JRU to find themselves in the semis, awaiting the winner of this matchup between FEU and La Sala. Yan na po yung ina-explain namin ni Marco for your viewing pleasure. Actually, a very impressive run here in the Phil Oil Tournament by CU. They actually def went 6-0, and as you mentioned, defeated uh, tough teams. Uh, one of them was National University, although um, National University, again, without Bobby Ray Park, so new look for National University, still trying to cope. Some of the players still trying to cope with the system of Coach Eric Altamirano, but impressive performance here from CU nonetheless. You know, Southwestern University also being the first Visayan team to make it to the quarterfinals of the Phil Oil Flying V Haynes Premier Cup. So great accomplishment for them. And uh, I'm sure they're looking forward to their match on Friday between either FEU or La Salle. All right, let's take a look at our matchup today and talk about Far Eastern University, Tamaraos. And they are without R.R. Garcia, without Terrence Romeo, who moved up to the pro level. Uh, Mike Tolomia is handling all of the scoring duties. And so far, he is up to the task here in the eliminations of the 2014 Phil Oil Flying V Haynes Premier Cup. Take a look at the numbers. Well, first off, hats off goes to Coach Nash Osella. This is a new look, FEU Tamaraos. No more Terence Romeo, no more R. Garcia. Mike Tolomia has emerged as their number one scoring threat together with Mac Bello, who has been playing superbly here in the preseason. Mike Tolomia's numbers, 16.3 points per game, 3.7 rebounds per game, 5.5 assists per game. And what is amazing here is that his field goal percentage is way up compared to last year's AP season, where he was averaging only 20% from the three-point area, 28% from the field. Right now, his numbers are 45% from the three and 49% from the field. So almost doubling his output in terms of percentages, Mike Tolomia really emerging as the go-to guy for the Tamaraos. Let's find out where he's getting all of this confidence. Uh, earlier today, he spoke to our Mitch Del Carmen. Mike, na sweep niya na ngayon elimination round and second kayo sa overall seed for the quarterfinals. Ano ba yung susi nyo para mapanalo nyo ang bawat laro? Uh, ginagawa lang namin yung anong mga tinuturo sa amin sa... So ngayon pre-season, lahat ng mga tinuturo na, sa amin sa practice na play namin siya sa game. 
Ngayon sa pag-graduate nga ni RR at ni Terence, sabi nila si Mike Tolomia nga ang tanging leader ng FEU TAMS this year. Ano ba yung mga major things na ginawa mo para magampanan mo yung ganong klaseng role para sa team? Hindi <laughs> naman. Uh, yun, yun yung uh, mas ini-involve ko lang sila, mga teammates ko sa offense na mas, mas umiikot yung bola nung, ano, ngayon sa ngayon. Maraming salamat Mike and back to you guys. Well, Mitch didn't really touch on uh, his development, his maturity, his confidence as a player. Pero uh, Mike did say a good point. He's involving his teammates, yeah. and it's showing in the numbers. Five and a half assists per game, aside from getting 16.3 points per game. That is correct. And he's actually one of the league leaders here in the Phil Oil Tournament in terms of assists. And in the past couple of seasons, we've seen shades of greatness from Mike Tolome. He's hit big shots. He's been able to score when called upon. And he's really emerging as their go-to guy. And uh, I like his attitude, very, very humble pa yung dating niya and very willing to, to pass off to his teammates. For De La Salle University, there has been no change so far from the defending UAAP champions. Jeron Teng has been the main man taking the bulk of the shots for uh, DLSU and uh, what numbers he has put up so far this season. And that is with the addition of, you know, offensive players as well in the lineup, he has still been able to find his own fair share of numbers. So that is exactly correct. Jaron Tang almost right where he was in UAP season 76. He was finals MVP. Right now he's averaging 13.5, shade under his 15 point average in UAP 76. 7.3 rebounds per game, 3.5 assists per game. So pretty much the same numbers for Jaron Tang. And what is uh, remarkable about that is that uh, Coach Juno has used a lot of combinations. He's, he's used uh, certain combinations to get guys like Julian Sargent, Terence Bustre, Abu, Trat uh, Abu Trater into the mix, into the into the, the flow of the offense. So despite that, Jaron Teng has still been able to put up the same numbers he's he's put up in his MVP Finals performance in, in Season 76. So look for him to still be the King Archer uh, in this game and in Season 77. Well, these two teams met last year in the UEAP and uh, LaSalle got the number two seed against uh, FEU in a playoff and eliminated FEU in the final four. So it's a rematch again. Let's find out what uh, Jeron Deng is thinking of uh, this matchup against FEU one more time as earlier today he spoke to Ina Siako. So Jeron, considering that you're facing a familiar opponent today, which is Young FEU, a team that you have played against before in different leagues, do you think my advantage or disadvantage to para sa Green Archers? Siguro our advantage is we're facing a familiar team which is FEU nga. So we already know how they play and we already have scouting reports against them. Siguro, um, yeah, in this final season kasi yung FEU, they're really playing well. They're 6-0 for now. So we're expecting this game to be a tough game talaga for us. Now given that, what do you think will be key for you and your team in winning today's game? Um, we just have to stick to the system. Um, and we have to help each other out. Uh, we know FEU is a strong team, so we got to put all our efforts together so we can put up in this win. Thank you, Jeron, and definitely good luck in today's game. Eric and Marco? Thank you, Ina. He's got his game face on. Very serious uh, answers para kay Jeron Teng. He knows how tough an opponent FEU is with a 6-0 with a card coming into today's game. And we have to remember this is a, a loser goes home, so the winner advances to the semifinals on Friday. So definitely must win for either of these teams. FEU's last championship in the Phil Oil Flying V Haynes Premier Cup was in 2009. De La Salle was a long way back. It was back to back, but it was 2006 and 2007. Let's see if uh, any of these teams advance in the first game here today. A tip-off coming up next, right after these. Sports in action for a quarterfinal match number three in your 2014 Bill Oil Flying V Haynes Premier Cup. Let us meet the starters first for the erstwhile still undefeated FEU Tamaraus. At power forward number four, Carl Brian Cruz. Forward number 12, Mac Bello. Center number 15, Anthony Hargrove. 
At point guard number 18, Achi Inigo. And the off guard number 13, Mike Tolomia. The head coach of the Tamaraos is Mr. Raul Cesar Nash Racela. And now let us meet the starters for the reigning UAAP champions, Dallas Green Archers. At point guard number 15, Kim Montalvo. The off guard number 17, Alman Vosotros. Center number seven, Arnold Van Opstel. Power forward number 20, Yutin Andrada. And at forward number 21, There's the starting lineup for the Green Archers and the Tamaraos today. Well, very notable here is that Kip Montalbo is starting at the point guard position here for Coach Juno Soler. Meanwhile, Coach Nash Rosella going with the same starters he went with when they defeated San Beda in their last game, 89 to 79. So it's a combination that's worked for Coach Nash. Meanwhile, for LaSalle, Coach Juno trying out Kip Montalbo, giving him more exposure at, at the, as the head of his team. Very pivotal here. It seems would be the production of Almond Vosotros and Mac Bello. Uh, both players second in scoring for their respective teams. Bello at a little under 13 points a game. Para kay Bello, just about 12 points a game naman. So napakalaki maitutulong niyan. Carl Brian Cruz with a miss on his first attempt. And Montalvo with a touch and will orchestrate the first offensive possession para sa Lasal. And you know, talking about Almond Vosotros, he's actually leading the league in terms of three-point percentages, shooting 60%, an amazing number from the field. Well, this zone is gonna pay pay a price if Vosotros starts to get hot. It depends on the FEU and he misses his first attempt from beyond the arc. Speaking of Almud Vosotros. It's also be going, going to be interesting to see if the defensive assignment that Vosotros has, he's tasked with guarding Mike right, Tolomia, right, yeah, will move. take some of that effort out of his offense. Game recall brought to you by Timex, the official timekeeper of Bill Oil Flying B, Haynes Premier Cup. Wear it well with Timex, true, since 1854. Van still good find and a nice reverse and those long arms of Keishan Andrada, really a big help. Let's uh, check in with Ina Oksiako. Well, Eric and Marco, despite the tough loss they experienced last Saturday, the Del Sol Green Archers did not dwell on such, instead focusing right away on playing against FEU. Though they did spend the past few days working on such improvements like their offense and their execution because Coach Juno Saler says, whether we have played against them or not, and no matter our records in the eliminations, we're back to zero here. We have no advantage coming into today's game. Kim Montalvo also adds that the game today will be tough, as he says that his team are expecting FEU to play very aggressive and physical. But we can definitely also expect the Green Archers to be more focused in today's game and to fight even harder and play smarter. Eric and Marco? All right, thank you, Ina. Great way for Juno Sauler to really you know, put the boys back down to earth and say, yeah. you know, we may have lost. We're 4-2 coming into the quarterfinals, but it's everyone's back to zero here as you take a look at this nice assist, the reverse and the foul. And it's nice to see Tayshan Andrada back to his usual self, patrolling that baseline. We missed that last year because of his injury, but now he looks to be in 100%. I asked him before this game, and then he just gave me a nice nod. So Tayshan Andrada looks, looks to be good for season 77. That'll put a lot of pressure on the frontline defense of the Tamaraus with Andrada hovering underneath. Tapos nasa ibabaw naman si Vosotros for that three. Belo lost it for a moment. Could not finish that close to the basket. Puntahan naman natin si Mitch Del Carmen. Well, Eric and Marco, upon talking to assistant coach Eric, he told me that the coaching staff and the rest of the team did not expect the sweep because they would they were really focused on allocating the right players to 
the a specific game situation and after the FE champs swept the eliminations, they don't really consider it as a major recognition for the team, but the boys would rather take pride in beating DLSU today, which is for them the team to beat in the upcoming UAAP Season 77. And for the boys, last words before the game started, ang paalala nila sa isa't isa ay walang magigigil. Eric and Marco. All right, thank you, Mitch. It's, that's right, para kay National, the target, the Bulls, is LaSalle. They're defending champions, obviously. And, you know, you don't take your 6-0 and brag about it. Obviously, the main goal is the championship, and that's that's the, the prize para sa FEU. And until they get there, there is no great job, pat on the back kind of thing. You have to work hard until you, you finish on top. Yeah, that's exactly correct. And we all know that during this uh, preseason, coaches are trying so many experiments so that 4-2 record of LaSalle can be a bit deceiving. We know that they have incoming players who, 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 whom Coach Juno is trying to get well acquainted to the system. Uh, that 6-0 of FEU also can be a bit deceiving because they did not play LaSalle. They did not play the other UAAP teams uh, during this preseason. They, one of the powerhouses that they faced was San Beda, whom they defeated. So I'm sure Coach Nasher Stella taking away the attention from the record and letting them focus on the game at hand. Thank you. As Bello on him, switch with Hargrove. Tang cuts, Tang all the way, yes! Great two-man game there between AVO and Jeron Tang. These two guys have gotten so familiar with the way each other plays. Great patience there from AVO. First field goal for Jeron Tang. Tolomia for three, just a bit off. A tip there by Inigo. And so, and far, so far, Lasada has shown that they are putting a lot of attention on Mike Tolomia, doubling him almost on the penetration and off of those ball screens. A reach and foul by Almond Vosotros. Here's that cut by Jeron Teng and the floater for his first field goal of the game. Great recognition there by Jeron Teng that it was his man that doubled an Arnold. Quick shot there by Carl Bryan, who's got away with uh, good look, pero could not finish. Vosotros as well on the other side. FEU is running, but no numbers on the break. And Montalvo, a little Over chippy the foul. Para sa Lasal dito, very early in the game. Lasal already in the penalty. That's from me. So two free throws on the next foul. And this is one of the guys I believe who will be crucial for the Tamaraos come season 77 and also here in the Phil Oil Tournament. Anthony Hargrove, he ha I, for me, I believe he has to average close to a double-double every game to really exert his presence in the front line of FEU. Well, so far, 0 for 2 in my unofficial count. Anthony Hargrove, and a horrible miss there. Para sa Lasal. Here comes Mac Bello and Andrada will commit the foul. Barako Bull power rebound. Barako Bull swak sa lakas, swak sa sarap. And it, La Sala, a good rebounding team because you were looking at some of the numbers kani kani lang. And La Sala as a team or and, and any of the players, they don't stand out as, uh, or at least in statistics, in walang umaangat because as a team, they really yeah. make it a conscious effort, each and every one of them really go for the rebound. That's, that's exactly correct. La Sala, the team, averages 46 rebounds per ball game. FEU, meanwhile, only averages, well, a shade under that at 45.5 rebounds per contest. Peng using the pick, sends it out to Montalvo. A little off on that three. There is a pushing foul on Andrada. Second foul on Keisha Andrada. And uh, Lasalle leading by two, 6 4. FE will take the break. We'll come back. De La Salle University leading by two, uh, six to four. We stand corrected here in the first quarter, 5.53 remaining. And this is the quarterfinal matchup between these two teams and it's a winner take home or takes all sort of an, sort of an event. Uh, there is, uh, of course, Alvin Teng. And so far, it's been a low scoring ball game here for both squads. The defense has really stepped up. They've paid a lot of attention on the penetrations of Mike Tolomia. And 
as well. FEU has paid a lot of attention on Jaron Tang. Meanwhile, you look here for FEU. Roger Pagoy is playing the point guard position. Sanay tayo, si Roger Pagoy usually plays the small forward. Arch nemesis actually yan ni Jaron Tang on defense. Well, Pagoy is a very physical defender and is not afraid of you know, a little bump and grind action inside the paint. Averages 7.7 .7 points a game. That time, that was a great find there by Achi Enigo, who has been the revelation here for Coach Nash. In season 76, he only averaged about seven minutes per ball game and 1.5 points. Right now, he's actually averaging 20 minutes and 7.4 points per contest. So he's been the starting point guard here for the Tamaraos. Bosotros at the line for two. Escoto, number eight para sa FEU, is in the ball game as well for the first time. Scott is another guy who we missed because of injury early on in season 76. I believe it was even the preseason. So mm -hmm. he's going to be a big boost to the cost of the Tamaraos. Escoto trying to set a pick. Here comes Mac Bello. Wow, uh, what a tough Bello. shot in traffic. Para kay Mac Bello, his second field goal of the game. And this is going to be a good matchup on defense for Gerald Teng, Mac Bello. He can probably match up against Mac Bello in terms of strength, but Bello has the slight advantage in terms of height and reach. Oh, but in terms of strength, take a look at Gerald Teng. Escoto, Russell Escoto was there, but Escoto moved back by about three, four feet after being oh. in Gerald Teng. That's how powerful the upper body strength is of Alam, Gerald Teng. I love that, Gerald Teng feeds on the contact. Yeah. He said he draws on that first to get his balance before he takes the shot. Nice drive by Escoto, attracting the defense. Hargrove was blocked. Hargrove's second attempt, not good. But Escoto with the putback. And this is what we're talking about. Mac Bello playing the three position. Escoto at the four and Hargrove at the five. The FEU front line is very lanky and athletic. That time getting two or three offensive rebounds before the putback. And you can see La Sala struggling to get these FEU boys off the paint. And out of rebounding position, but it's easier said than done. Well, we all know that Jason Perkins is an excellent rebounder in terms of getting position inside the paint. But, you know, Escoto, Bello, and Anthony Hargrove are just long and have extremely quick second and third jumps. Let's see how LaSalle deals with this long front line. Para sa FEU, and they're shooting from outside. Perkins with his first field goal. Off the bench. That was a great recognition there by Jason Perkins. Help defense came in the form of Anthony Hargrove, but he was able to hit that fadeaway. Great pressure by Perkins on Escoto, making him pass the ball. But a miss there by Bello, who we know can hit it from outside. Matt Bello actually shooting 25% from the three here in the Phil Oil tournament. Van Opstel maybe spent a little too much time trying to find an open man or, or an established position almost threw it away. A bunch of substitutions here, a couple para sa La Salas. Teng and Montalvo will sit down or make that Van Opsel and Montalvo will sit down. And meanwhile for FU, Raymar Jose, this is the guy to watch out for. We a revelation here, he is the third leading scorer for the Tamaraos, averaging 10.6 or 10.2 points per game and six rebounds per contest. And he has really emerged as a, one of the better frontline men of, of FEU. And what's also amazing about Jose is the fact that his field goal percentage is at 76%, something crazy Actually, like that. Actually, I think he's number one in the league in yeah, the Philo exactly. tournament right now at 76% from the field. So that's extremely high and, you know, uh, the likes of or the front line like Norbert Torres is going to have a hard time trying to keep him outside you know that that easy part of the shaded area because Jose has gotten his fair share of touches meanwhile for LaSalle one of the rookies here Prince Rivero immediately called for an offensive foul but uh, former the NCAA the juniors Rivero MVP Rivero from De La Salle Green Hills still trying to learn the ropes and, uh, did he set it set an early pick or was he it was, was a he moving late? screen so he was he was late or was he early or did the did the player he was in? late because he was trying to chase Achi Nigo <laughs> right there good call there by the part of the referee so make one thing adjustment Patosi Prince Rivero because 
in, in high school, he was playing the four position. Yeah. Right now, you see he's guarding Roger Pagoy. So he has to learn to play a smaller Pogoy. position because of the bigger guys here in college. And Pogoy hitting a difficult shot. Binomba pa ng konti. Napangiti na nga si Roger Pagoy. We're tied at 12 apiece here in the first. The kids are still uh, well, still have a lot of free time before uh, officially all all schools uh, start their school year by June 9, so they have some time. Check out our Phil Oil Flying V Haynes Premier Cup quarterfinals mula sa arena in San Juan. You can always watch it on TV, of course, but it's always better live. And uh, this is an example of the depth of La Salle. Thomas Torres and Norbert Torres coming off the bench. So you can just imagine the firepower here. A beautiful move that he developed as a post player in high school. Prince Rivero showing a thing or two against the veteran Roger Pugoy. Excellent up and under fake here on the part of Prince Rivero. So De La Salle up by two, 14-12 with a free throw coming up. Para I think rookie na si Prince Rivero. And another one of the rookies of De La Salle, Julian Sargent, checking into the ball game. He's a, a wing guy, athletic wing guy who can hit the jumper and uh, slash through the paint. And he starts with guarding Mike Tolomia here. Quick hand so far by Sargent, disrupting the dribble. Then Tolomia goes again, Tolomia passes. Difficult shot para kay uh, Jose. He falls down, but there's going to be a foul. And we talked about oh, Jose's okay. activity. Yes, and yes, that's yes, one of the reasons why he moves well without the ball and finds the, those creases at the defense of oh. uh, Calaban. Ano? That, was, that was pretty tight. There were about four defenders inside the paint. Dun, pero nahanap ni Tolomia si Jose, who made himself available. And that was an excellent pass also on the part of Mike Tolomia to find Jose under the basket. Just a 54% free throw shooter, one out of two. But I, Raymar Jose, one point lead, De La Salle here in the first quarter. Rookie here for Coach Nacosella, Francis Tamsi, checking into the ball game. That is number five, playing the point guard position, guarding Thomas Torres. Rivero loses it underneath the basket, but it will stay with La Salle. Uh, ball slapped away by Colombia. 13 seconds to shoot for De La Salle. Sargent picks up the inbound. Coming down to two minutes left in the first. Rivero. Five seconds to shoot. The long one for Perkins. Voila. Good hustle by FEU. Sargent and Torres were there to try for an offensive rebound. Good hesitation. Tamsi off the glass and in. Great ball fake there on the part of Tamsi and then going, finishing with the left hand over Jason Perkins. Perkins almost traveled, stepped into a two and knocks it in. Well, Jason Perkins has shown us that he has that range. He can actually take another step back because he has that three pointer in his arsenal. Battle for the lead here. FEU with possession and a chance to go on top. Sergeant really sticking close to Mike Tolomia, and that's going to be an offensive foul. The activity of Sergeant really posing a problem for Tolomia. And uh, the Tamaraus, Jose with an illegal pick. And Asal likes to play Jason Perkins at the top of the key because he gives them that versatility. Right now, up high-low play here with Norbert Torres. Nice move, but he could not knock it in. Torres, Tamsi with the ball, lead pass to Lomia. That's a travel, it seems, Rally. yes. Obvious call there on the part of the referees. Sa three points palang <laughs> pinik up ni Mike Tolomia. And he didn't even bother to bring it down. Right there, before the three-point line, one, <laughs> two, three. Yeah, he got a little excited. Nakita niyang two-on-one kind of a break. Uh, and 
the younger brother of uh, Russell Escoto, Richard Escoto, on the floor here right now guarding Norbert Torres. Torres from outside, voila, and Escoto with a rebound. Good job boxing out there by the yellow shirts. Tough shot, Colombia. Norbert Torres with a rebound. Here's Thomas Torres running. Torres has some wing guys out there, but opted to bring it back out and use some time off of the clock. Good job on the part of FU getting back in transition. Sergeant, nice crossover. Went into a sidestep, voila. Two seconds. Somebody has to put it up. Not enough time. Low scoring ball game we have here so far. 15 to 16 in favor of LaSalle. Both teams not really getting a flow into their offense. You have to credit, give a lot of credit to the defense as well. And in fact, in the last minute and a half, both teams were unable to score. FEU unable to retake the lead, while LaSalle unable to pad up. Pero Jeron Teng uh, really showing his strength and leading the way for LaSalle with five points. Para naman sa FEU, it's uh, Mac Bello with four. LaSalle leading by one, 16-15 at the end of one. It's the quarterfinals of the 2014 Phil Oil Flying V Haynes Premier Cup. Live on ABS-CBN Sports in Action. Dito sa Arena in San Juan, Eric Tipan with Marco Benitez. Courtside Ina Ongsiako and Mitch Del Carmen reporting for La Salle and FEU respectively. It's uh, been a seesaw battle for the lead. La Salle is on top by one, 16-15 at the start of the second quarter. And uh, like what we were saying, both coaches trying several combinations here. Prince Rivero, Pam C in for FEU, Prince Rivero in for La Salle. And this is a totally new lineup on the floor as compared to the one that started the ball game here for oh, Coach Juno Soler. Well, Rivero is pretty active. A second trip to the line, and he's been, he's getting some touches. He's getting uh, a lot of uh, leeway, and uh, itong si Coach Juno Soler giving him uh, a lot of you know, confidence. And yeah. again, we will call out some plays for you, and we'll see how you post up with some of the guards and, uh, you know, uh, forwards ng FEU. That's correct. Meanwhile, for FEU, it's only Mike Tolomia and Carl Brian Cruz who are on the floor who started the ball game out. But they, they've also sat on the bench for a couple of minutes. So this is their second stretch on the floor. Jason Belfinado also coming from the FEU Baby Tamaraz program on the floor. Series of cuts to free up Tolomia. Tamsi has the ball, seven to shoot. Finds Cruz. They swing it around. Four seconds. Tolomia for three. Good ball movement and wise use of the shot clock by the FEU. Here's Rivero yep. again. You have to give a lot of credit to the defense of LaSalle. Almost every, all the attempts of Mike Tolomia have been challenged. Thomas Torres, difficult shot in traffic. Lost the ball on the way up. Tolomia, corner, Tamsi, Tamsi, three. Almost, but not quite. Only two points from the free throw para kay Rivero, giving La Salle a three-point lead. Make that a five-point lead off a basket by Perkins. And that is the second basket by Jason Perkins from that spot. So Richard Escoto has to recognize the man he's guarding, has that range. Tolomia, nice switch, Perkins to keep Tolomia away. Escoto, reach in, Sargent commits a foul. You see the LaSalle defense really committed to getting the ball away from the hands of Mike Tolomia, making somebody else try to beat them outside of Tolomia. Jason Delfinado steps out, Matt Bello checks back in. Four points so far for Bello, leading scorer ng FEU. Richard Escoto gets the first of two. And that long drought finally broken para sa FEU. They haven't scored in the last three minutes. Let's go to Mitch Del Carmen. 
It is not enough. Eric and Marco, the team has been focusing on their post defense for the past trainings, but Coach Nash is not satisfied with their application. He mentions that the boys need to give more effort in stopping Deal as he's big man. Not less, he gives it to them by saying that it is a good training ground for the team today. Para daw masanay sila sa ganitong klase ng role. The goal for today is not to solely beat Deal as you, but to get their confidence in and their nervousness out of their system. Eric and Marco. Thank you, Mitch. This is the proving ground. See how your team gels, how lineups develop uh, prior to the UAAP. And this is Mac Bello, who is the emerging superstar here for FEU. Nonchalantly going about his business that time. Big man running the floor, showing us his ball handling skills, getting the foul and one from Thomas Torres. That's why he is the second leading scorer in FEU. And he has a good stroke as well for a big man. Seven points. Bello leading the way para sa Tamaraos. And you know, the, talking about the post defense of FEU, as Mitch was, was saying, so far, Carl Cruz has done a great job pushing Norbert Torres outside of his comfort zone. Uh, but Torres finding the open man and Sargent knocking a long two in. Let's go to Ina Ongsiako. Eric and Marco, the Dallas All Green Archers got into penalty early on in the first quarter. That is why coming into this quarter, Coach Juno Saler urges the boys not to give out any useless fouls. He also asks them to be careful on the balls of the ref and not to risk anything. He also notes that they should be more aggressive on the boards and when they do get that rebound, they need to push more. In the end, he commends them for their defense shown in the first quarter, but he says that FU likes to go one-on-one, -on -one, so they need to contain more in this quarter. Eric and Marco? All right, thank you, Ina. Back-to-back -back threes. It was changed by the officials. The sergeant basket was a three, and then Thomas Torres slicing through the defense, going back out and knocking in a three. And it's a big six-point lead, the largest para Salazar so far. That is correct, and that was great recognition by Matthew Salem, knowing that he did not have the initial three-pointer, goes to Thomas Torres, who was more open than he was. Salem three in and out, Bello drives, ooh -ah. Seems like a block there on Rivero, but the Rivero, officials yeah. let it go. Rivero faking. What a tough shot by Prince Rivero, six points. And uh, he ties Perkins, leading all De La Salle scorers. And Matt Bello taking out his anger on that rim, going for that stuff. But he was fouled. I believe it was on uh, Julian Sargent. Take a look at this drive by the young rookie. Really showing us he's got some decent moves. And this uh, dunk attempt Di Bello. Well, that was a Matthew Salem who had that foul, number 11. But what you like about Prince Rivero, he has that upper body strength. So he may not be as big as the usual number fours, but at, at the three position, He's probably as strong or even stronger than a lot of the three guys we have here in the league. And that's because of all those years playing a oh. center, playing a power forward and a center in high school. Although ball handling leaves much to be desired, as you can see there, Rivero almost throwing it away and losing it for Lasal. Getting swarmed, gets it off, and it will still be off of Kim one time. Yeah, so it's going to be FEU ball here. Catch and shoot, Bello. Hargrove trying to tip it in against three green shirts. And this has been the matchup that we started off this ball game with Anthony Hargrove versus Arnold Van Opstel inside the paint. So far, Hargrove unable to capitalize on that uh, athleticism. Only right, two Brian points for Hargrove. Van Opsel has yet to score in this game. Yep, although Hargrove hasn't been able to score, you, you like his aggressiveness because he has been there contesting and then trying to get those second chance opportunities. That time, his effort paid off, getting foul on Van Opsel. Bello knocks that one in. Six-point Bello, no flair, yeah. but he just goes about doing his business. And that is the reason why he's so effective here for Coach Nash. 
Montalvo probing the defense, looking for an opening. That's short. Galing kay Sargent, Inigo, bounce pass, Bello, foul, uh, and cut Bello. that basket in. And there is very little that Kib Montalbo can do against Mac oh, Bello in transition. Montalbo, yeah, Montalbo giving up about I four, four or five inches, Rangers. obviously. And the FEU coming back here, trimming that what was once an eight-point lead down to four, 28-24 here in the second quarter. Looking at the crowd, mula dito sa arena in San Juan, watching the quarterfinals of the Phil Oil Flying V Haynes Premier Cup. And they take a look at our fast break of the game, powered by Star Mobile Octo Fast or Octa Fast Octa Holes. Well, FEU as a team averages close to 10 fast break points per ball game, and that is where they get. Some of their offense at Mac Bello, oh, usual oh, finisher oh, on the break because of his length, because of his athleticism. Mac Bello looking to cut it to that eight point lead further. And trim it down to three with the bonus. Bello, a 68% free throw shooter, is going to have to develop that if he will get plenty more touches in the upcoming UAAP season. Before that timeout started, uh, as the players were heading to the bench, Coach Nash Rosella spent an extra few Arnold seconds Arnold. talking about talking to Mac Bello, trying to correct his awkward jump shot, which he didn't make. Coach Nash probably wanted him to move the ball a little more and try to Mac find Bello, a better Mac opportunity. Mac Bello, that length and athleticism paying off. Nice cut down the baseline, and Hargrove did. Magandang pasa. But prior to that play, I should take a look at an unsportsmanlike foul, it seems. That's going to be uh, on Dennison. Sportsmanlike foul number. Uh, Van Opsel with a great tip over Hargrove in the previous play. And that was the first uh, basket for Arnold Van Opsel. For Matt Salem. So that Dennison push sent uh, Montalbo. Montalbo. Oh, He's crawling down and Vosotros tried to make a sneaky move and set himself at the free throw line. Oh, it's the forearm to the neck. Uh, that is the reason for the flagrant foul. Normally when players try to fight against screens, they usually just call it an offensive foul if there is a lot of contact. But that time, Dennison's forearm was right to the neck of Kip Montalbo and that is what the referees deemed as flagrant. So it's free throws plus possession. Para sa De La Salle University, Montalvo is okay. Dennison will have to sit it out and cool off first. And another new face on the floor here for Coach Nasrcella, Jason David, wearing number 11. Here in the field, all it averages 11 minutes per ball game and 2.3 points per contest. Inigo knocked, gets, gets knocked down, shooting a three, buries it. There's going to be a foul on Montalvo. That's the first field goal. Uh, Inigo. And one of the most oh, frustrating things for coaches is when a defender fouls a three-point shooter. And here's that replay there, Achi Inigo. Actually averages 56% from the three here in the Phil Oil tournament. Somebody you, could, you can't mess with shooting a three, that's for sure. Now Montalbo knows. Oh, nice shot there by Van Opsel. He's coming alive here in the second quarter. Four points. And that's a, that's a great move. That sweeping hook by AVO. If he's able to get that consistently into his arsenal, it's going to be a very potent weapon come season 77. Argo with a one-hander. Just his second field goal. First in the second quarter. And a foul on Jason. David holding off on Vosotros. Tawagun na veteran move siya ni Almond Vosotros. Look at that on your screen. And officials will always give the benefit of the yeah. doubt to the offensive player, obviously. That's exactly correct. And Bihira lang mga post up to si Almond Vosotros, but that time posting up Jason David. Jason David. Umawe, see David on the other side. Uh, Vosotros caught napping defensively and he knocks in a two.
dish by Vosotros to Van Opstel, right, and Van Opstel, all of his six points here in the second quarter. And ABO has developed that consistent mid-range jumper to go along with his sky hook. Three twenty-four remaining in the first half. Oh, nice cut, Escoto! Yes. And that's great interior passing there. You have to admire Anthony Hargrove developing that interior pass. Vosotros has the height advantage oh, over David, oh, and he's oh, oh. making full use of this opportunity and really posting up David. Looking for that contact as well. Hargrove against Van Opstel. Hargrove Anthony and the two Hargrove. big men. Mupuntos oh. ngayong second quarter, Marco. Anthony Hargrove taking it upon himself to go up against Arnold Van Opstel. Let's see if we're going to see a duel here in the third quarter. Both Hargrove and Van Opsel with six apiece. Top oh, shot by oh, oh, Vosotros, oh, and it oh, doesn't oh, matter oh, who you have guarding him. Vosotros will knock it in. Two-point lead para Salasal here. 40-38 in the second quarter. Forty thirty-eight, La Salle against FEU in the quarterfinals of the 2014 Phil Oil Flying V Haynes Premier Cup. And the winner goes on to the semifinals. The loser, wala pong best of three dito. Yeah. They will end their bid in this tournament and just get a fresh start para sa 77th season of UAAP. That's correct. And, uh, before that timeout, Amon Vosotros getting two quick baskets and you know the feeling as an offensive player, pag may nakita kang uh, defender na feeling mo kaya kaya mo. Every time down the floor, you're asking for that basketball, and that, I'm sure that is what Amon Vosotros is feeling right now against Jason David. There's David trying to get one back. Pinasa. Richard Escoto, wala against the taller Van Opstel. That's going to be a tough task shooting over the long arms of Van Opstel. And Van Opstel seeing Richard Escoto right there. And laki yung mata. Oh, oh. Same way Amon Vosotros saw Jason David. That time Arnold Van Opstel. He can do this the entire afternoon. Head and shoulders advantage over Richard Escoto. No way. Richard Escoto is going to be able to stop him unless he commits a foul. Richard Escoto. And we have, so Escoto uh, steps out. Uh, Ra National Sela seeing the disadvantage here. Actually, no, it's pa. See Richard Escoto. And this is a very thin and small well, front line. Para sa FEU, Marco. What they'll probably do is they'll probably change up with Russell Escoto taking on Ar Arnold Van Opstel and then Richard Escoto, Escoto switching down to Yutian Andrada, which is no easy task in oh, its own oh, right. It's, it's like the same banana. Oh. Oh. Except that Yutian Andrada doesn't really post you up. He just uh, feeds off of drop passes and offensive rebounds, while Avio will really post you up straight inside the low block. Back to a four-point lead after a ninth deadlock at 38 all. Colombia knocks in his first field goal of the game. And that's a great play run there. Big to small ball screen, Mike Tolomia. Jeron Teng went under the screen, leaving Mike Tolomia wide open for the three. And Tolomia commits the foul on Jeron Teng. There's the handoff yep. and the open look for Mike Tolomia. And sur very surprising is the fact that it's just the first field goal in Mike Tolomia for the FEU. He's going to have to get more touches to be more aggressive in the second half. And I'm sure Coach Juno Soler will, will mention that as one of the adjustments. Probably Yutian Andrada will have to show on that handoff and then just allow the help defense to take care of Russell Escoto if he rolls into the, rolls into the paint. Bank with seven Escoto. points now. And a three-point lead for De La Salle, 44-41. Another new face on the floor. He is Reeve Uksan, number 23. 
silly foul on the part of Vosotros there. He should have noticed now the help was coming from Van Opsel in no way is Jason David finding a way to throw it up easily against uh, Van Opsel. So there is a foul na pangiti na lang si Vosotros. Well, medyo nagigigil din ng konti ito si Almond Vosotros against Jason David. But Jason David, you have to admire his punk not backing yeah. down against Almond Vosotros. And continuing on with the attack, seeing that you have Van Opstel yeah. coming to help defensively. Tang asking for the pick and roll. Yutian and Rada rolls and ito nga, uh, getting exposed is this very small oh, front line. Ng right, 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 FEU and uh, Nash Rosella will Bello, now react Bello, Bello, Bello. and put back in Mac Bello because Lasal is taking advantage and trying to develop plays inside the paint. That is correct. So he's going to take out Mike Tolomia in favor of Mac Bello. So a little bigger here at the three position. You have uh, Russell at the five, Buksang at the four, and Mac Bello. Interchangeably can play three and four. So just to provide a little more length, especially on the help defense. And even against four, Tamaraos, Van Opsel almost got the offensive board that time. 120 remaining in the first half. Escoto against uh, Tang, surprising he didn't post him up. And an easy rebound by Van Opsel. At that time, there was a switch on defense. And there is Van Opsel again on the post. Operating against Uksang and it's like can taking candy from a baby by Arnold Van Oxel. And especially when Avio goes to that hook shot with his strong hand, there are very few people in the UAP or in college who can block that outright. Waving off the screen, Sipelo, but the double team came. The cut. Wala. Natapik a bola na puta salasal. 36 seconds remaining. Ali, you pass is good by uh, Thomas Torres for his fifth point of the game. Great, great, uh, great vision there on the part of Jaron Tang. Good pass. Jason David getting caught in transition, not getting back fast enough against Thomas Torres. About five seconds separate game and shot clock. Eight to shoot para sa FEU. They're looking for offense here. Escoto drives left. Shoots from 16 and knocks it in. Escoto with six points. Uh, Thomas Torres tapa upo and was unable to get a play off with a, in a dying second in the first half. Well, Asal able to answer that run stage here by FU with good offense of their own. Coming from Thomas Torres, coming from Arnold Van Opstal and even Jason Perkins to start out the third quarter. Meanwhile, Mike Tolomia still has to find his groove. Colombia only with one basket in the game so far. That's a three-point field goal. Eh, ito yun. Kaya medyo malaki-laki ang labang ng Lasal. The biggest was eight, but it's at six. It's still a substantial lead going into the half. And uh, the offense flowing a lot smoothly, especially with that small lineup sa front line ng FEU. Uh, Van Opsel took advantage and has 10 points leading the way para sa Lasal. 49-43, Lasal leads FEU at the half. Back here at the arena in San Juan, and we are at the half of breaking down this quarterfinal game between De La Salle University at 49 points against FEU at 43 points. The biggest lead of La Salle was at 8. Ang FEU, lumamang din naman, but there have been five lead changes and nine deadlocks all in all. So it's been a tight game, Marco. Yep, that is exactly correct. And uh, scoring actually picked up in the second quarter because uh, after the first quarter, we were at less than 20 points for both teams. And uh, take a look at the field goal percentages. Uh, almost 50% for both teams. Lasal actually shooting better than 50%, 18 out of 33. FEU at 18 out of 37. Free throws, meanwhile, both teams getting to the line almost exactly the same number of times. But FEU uh, shooting terribly from the free throw line, 5 out of 14. Assist-wise, both teams also known for sharing that basketball. 9 for Lasal. 7 for FU and defensive rebounds, 18 for LaSalle, 15 for FU. And that is one of the reasons why no team has ha gotten the clear lead. No no big advantage for either team in terms of rebounding. It's just that FU has not been able to get their scoring flow, especially for Mike Toromia. You have to give a lot of credit to LaSalle. Meanwhile, for LaSalle, 
they've been able to get the ball to where they want to get it. Arnold Van Opsel in the post, Jason Perkins on the baseline, and Jaron Teng cutting to the basket. So that is where the South has the slight advantage. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Bello leading the way with 13 points para sa FEU. On the other hand, the man Van Opsel came alive, all of his 10 points, which is uh, a team high para Salasal came in the second a quarter and it came when Lumiit, your yeah. front line ng FEU with the likes of Richard Escoto, the uh, younger brother of Russell Escoto ang pumasok and nilabas uh, si Anthony Hargrove oh. si Anthony Hargrove and so many others kaya medyo naghari si Van Opsal inside the paint yeah by my count probably 6 or 8 out of his 10 points coming when Anthony Hargrove was on the bench so again you have the start uh, leading scorers on your screens, Bella with 13 Van Opsal with 10 uh, absent right now is Mike Tolomia, who has only three points in the ball game. Who, for a guy who is the number one scorer for FU, so look for FU to try to get Mike Tolomia more touches, more opportunities to score, either cutting to the basket, giving him more ball screens, especially at the top of the key where he can work his magic. And also missing are the numbers of Raymar Jose, averaging in double digits yeah. at 10.2 points a game. Uh, he barely scored or barely actually played in the first half very limited minutes for him as obviously coach Nash Rafaela giving a lot of playing time to uh, some of his younger and newer players get them accustomed to this level of competition in the college ranks and you see FU starting out the third quarter dropping almost dropping to his zone when Arnold Van Opp still getting the ball in the in his low block Colonia starting out aggressive. First attempt of the third quarter for FEU. A lucky break here for FEU. Ball is called off La Salle, so it will stay with the Tamaraus. Tolomia looking to be more aggressive, dishing. Inigo gets the ball, they swing it back out. Bello for three. Yes! And Bello, three! And that one was brought about by the penetration of Mike Tolomia. A lot of attention being given to Mike Tolomia's penetration. Jeratang had to help, leaving Mac Bello wide open for the three. Let's check in with Ina Omsiako. Eric and Marco emphasizing once more the early penalty the Green Archers got in the second quarter. Coach Gino Soler said in the locker room to not waste their fouls. He says, if you're going to foul, foul them hard. The points we're giving up are because of silly fouls and because we're not playing smart. Coming into the third quarter as well, Coach Juno also stresses to his team the need to get back in transition. He says, even after a mid-basket, we gotta get down on defense because they're going to look to attack right away. So just go to the nearest man because priority is to get back on the paint. This is what it takes to get through the next 20 minutes. Coach Juno adds, Eric and Marco. Alright, thank you, Ina. Tolomia taking advantage of the much smaller uh, Torres and knocks the ball in off the glass on this break. And this is one way to get Mike Tolomia going. Get him out in transition. One of the best finishers on the floor for Coach Nash Rosella. Very little that Thomas Torres can do once Mike Tolomia gets airborne. And Tolomia with his sixth point of the game after getting his second field goal. Lasal is still up by three, 52-49 here in the third quarter. Thomas Torres, a, a huge cog in the offense. And you see five yellow shirts packing the paint there when Arnold Van Opsel gets the ball. Oh, Torres, another three. And Inigo is paying the price for double yep. teaming Van Opsel on the post. Let's go to Mitch Del Carmen. Eric and Marco, sa pagdating natin sa second half, umaasa si Coach Nash na huwag nang magulat ang tam sa nilalaro ng DLSU. Magpo-post at magpo-post yan, kaya dumepensa kayo ng maaga at tulungan nyo ang teammate nyo. Ang tanging mensahe niya nga sa tam sa yung importansya ng team. Ika nga ni Coach Nash, put your team before yourself. Ngayon, narinig ko kayo kanina pinag-uusapan si Mike Tolomia tungkol sa kanyang laro. At napansin din ito ni Coach Nash, kaya't paalala niya, hindi na naman kailangan dalihin ang team. Maglaro lang siya ng maayos at doon niya lang manilid ang kuponan. Eric and Marco? Alright, thank you. Mitch, uh, Tolomia coming alive though. He has become more active offensively. Eight points. And five of those coming in the third quarter, pero somebody's got to stop a green archer from scoring. It's been everyone. Van Opstal, 
of Vosotros and also Thomas Torres. But Tolomia continues to score his second three of the game. 11 points for Mike Tolomia. That one was off a simple screen away play there for FEU. Mima for LaSalle. Eight of the last ten points of LaSalle have come from the combination of Thomas Torres and Arnold Van Opstel. Deng. Ball knocked away. It's still in the hands of Deng with six to shoot. Difficult shot for Deng, but somehow finds a way to put it in. And that's just what you call brute strength there on the part of Jaron Teng. Winnersen oh. and Hargrove. Blocked, but fouled on the arm, either by Andrada or by Van Opstel. And you love the aggressiveness of Anthony Hargrove. He has been aggressive this entire afternoon. Here's that play there from FEU. Screen away play. Almond uh, Vosotros getting a little bit caught on the on the ball screen or on the screen away. That's that's just pure power uh, for body strength on the part of Gerard Teng. I mean, and, and Bello is no pushover. Mm -hmm. For the sure. Yep, athleticism and lengthwise. Bello has the advantage, but Gerard Teng. Really just using his upper body strength, that's what you mentioned. That's a big boy play, you know? Okay, <laughs> Jeron Teng, that's for sure. Meanwhile, Asala has already scored 12 points here. We're only at the six minute mark of the third quarter. So better offense from both teams here in the third. Hargrove needs to find a way to get the Better one on one defense against Van Opsal because all this help from Indigo is killing FEU right now. That is a third three pointer there from the same spot by Thomas Torres. And let's see if Coach Nasusella adjusts his defense in, the, in their next timeout. Probably get, get the double from somebody else outside of Achi Indigo. Eight point lead, the biggest para sa. Lasalle right now at 64-56, and Carl Brian Cruz now takes a stab at guarding Van Opsel. Open is staying in an easy basket as the, all of the defense at FEU are focused on Van Opsel on the post. It's the biggest lead of the Green Archers at 10 points, 66-56 over FEU. You don't see it there, but the De La Salle fans for sure are smiling on the inside with a 10-point lead here, 66-56 over FEU. And this is a winner-take-all game in the quarterfinals. Uh, take a look at Arnold Van Opsel. He's been finding the open man every time a double team comes. And you have to give a lot of credit to Arnold Van Opsel, his patience inside the post. He's really developed into a mature player at that time. Finding Jeron Teng, prior to that, finding Thomas Torres, everything emanating from AVO's back to the basket uh, offense and his willingness to pass out of the double team. And this is the big problem right now for FEU. They've got to find someone who can guard Van Opsal one on one on the post because this double team is, is really hurting them. Tolomia missing. Carl Bryan, Carl who's very Bryan active Bruce. on the offensive board, that is his second field goal of the game. Well, I guess so far the philosophy of Coach Nash is to allow LaSalle to beat them from the three-point area rather than allow Van Opsel to get an easy basket inside the paint. But so far it has been backfiring because of the shooting of Thomas Torres. Better job there by Carl Bryan Cruz pushing Van Opsel almost to the three-point area out of his comfort zone. So the initial solution that they've yeah, gone is they've switched our, Carl Brian Cruz, who is a little bit more physical as compared to Anthony Hargrove, and pushed Van Opsel outside the comfort zone. There was an elbow above the shoulder coming from Tang just to stop the fast break. Lucky he didn't get called for a sportsman-like or flagrant foul. Hey, Dennison. Hey, Dennison, no? yeah, that's correct. They're trying to rub Delomia off some screens. There's a free him up, and Colombia. it's been working for us at FEU. And that's a great play there for FEU. Three screens used by Mike Delomia. The last one being a handoff and a screen coming from Anthony Hargrove. Open the lane for that floater from Mike Delomia. Cruz, a much better defender, foiling that initial play para que Van Opsa. Pero Hargrove now getting punished by another player in Jason Perkins. Well, Jason Perkins equally as good in the post as Arnold Van Opstel. And 
the inadequacies of Anthony Hargrove defensively being exposed here by De La Salle University on both sides. Tolomia, ito yung screen kanina to free him up for an easy layup. Pero that started out with a pass from Tolomia from the top of the key. Got a screen going to the paint and then got another screen going out and then the final handoff from Anthony Hargrove. So tatlong screen yung dinahanan yeah. ni Thomas Torres. La Salle coming down to four minutes left in the third quarter. They're looking for Teng. Teng for three. That's off. And FEU will live with that. We'll live with Jaron Teng taking the three pointer rather than Thomas Torres. Bello off the glass, a little too strong. Perkins working on Cruz. Double team comes. Ball knocked away momentarily. Seven to shoot. Para kay Perkins. Hargrove collects the loose ball. Tolomia takes advantage of the momentary lapse defensively than Lasal, but cannot knock it in. Long arms by Hargrove getting a steal. Easy layup. Colombia. Colombia underneath. Great steal and great recognition there by Anthony Hargrove. Great look away pass as well. So let's see if FU can make a little bit of headway here to close out the third quarter. Both teams looking a little bit uh, winded because of the pace of play here in the third. Perkins. Close out by Hargrove. But Thomas Torres is sizzling front. 17 points on four threes knocked in in the third quarter alone. And all of that from the left wing. So I'm sure the defense of FU will have to close out a lot harder in the fourth quarter. Thomas Torres scorching hot. Now forget about closing out on Torres. Tie somebody to the hip of Thomas Torres in the fourth oh, quarter. Ng bola. Torres from the corner. Oh, Torres! Amazing shooting display from beyond the arc for Thomas Torres. Can you believe that? 20 points. 15 coming in the third quarter. And he's in the zone. It all started out with those open looks coming from the interior or that passing from Arnold Van Opstel in the post. And once you get Thomas Torres in the zone, very hard for them to stop. <laughs> it's insane what uh, Thomas Torres is doing right now. And he has single-handedly given De La Salle University a 12-point lead. To, well, uh, for a moment, because nakapunto si Hargrove, but uh, what a shooting display here by Thomas uh, Torres. 74-64, uh, 10-point lead para sa De La Salle over FEU here in the third quarter. Seventy-four, sixty-four. After the twelve-point lead was sliced by two on the Anthony Hargrove basket para sa FEU, but they've been struggling. Well, defensively, I guess, because offensively they've been scoring, but they just haven't found a way to stop La Salle. More specifically, stopping Thomas Torres from knocking in all of those threes. Six threes in the game, five all in the third quarter for Thomas Torres. And that's exactly correct. And Thomas Torres not really known as a three-point shooter. He averaged 22% from the three in season 76, only averaging 18% from three here in the Phil Oil 2014. Right now, five three-pointers, five out of five in the third quarter. Six for seven, all in all. Just missing one. So I guess we're going to have to revise that line as uh -huh. an Not known as a three-point shooter, si Thomas Torres. Because he is now. Well, he has really fed off of that interior offense of La Salle because FEU is gambling on that double team it's, inside uh, the paint. And that has left Thomas Torres and guys like Amon Vosotros open from the three-point area. And it's become infectious, Marco. Perkins, nothing but net on the last basket. Bogoy looking for a screen. Gets one from Jose. Bogoy, long two, yes. R R Bogoy. Both teams just scoring 
almost at will. That's how we're already with 27 points here in the third quarter. 15 coming from Thomas Torres. There's Wasotros missing from outside. Pogoy from the elbow, short. Vosotros, poor spacing para Salasal. And there's Norbert Torres now. All by his lonesome on the post, working on Escoto. Yes. Norbert Torres. First basket for Norbert Torres. Salasal really flexing their muscle inside the paint, whether it's Jason Perkins, AVO, or that time Norbert Torres. Escoto, a long two. Eight points. And that is what Russell Escoto gives you. He gives you that, he's like a stretch four with Raymar Hase playing the five position. He has that range. So he's going to force Jason Perkins outside the paint, much like what Jason Perkins does to opposing defenses. Vosotros really took up almost the entire remaining As game clock. But Masal failed to score a basket there. We'll take a look at some of the highlights of the third quarter. Well, Mike Tolomia, one good thing for you is he came alive, having only three points in the first half, uh, scored 12 in the third quarter. Well, but for FU, the, the silver lining here is that you only gave up three points in the third quarter. You were down six at the half. Right now, you're just down nine points. So you've been able to pretty much keep in step, even with a stellar shooting performance from Tomas Torres. So hopefully, you'll have a good enough kick in the fourth quarter and be able to make some stops to overcome this deficit. 78-69, LaSalle over FEU at the end of the third. Tomas Torres leading the way for De La Salle with 20 points on six of seven shooting from beyond the arc. And at the start of the fourth quarter, LaSalle leading by nine, 78-69 over FEU in this winner take all quarter final matchup. FEU is the higher seed at two. La Salle is at seven with a four and two card. FEU has been undefeated in the Phil Oil Flying VH Premier Cup uh -huh. coming into today's game. That's correct. La Salle with a 4 2 win loss record. And uh, again, the winner of this match will face Southwestern University in the semifinals on Friday. So if you're FEU, you're hoping that you. You're, you'll be able to close out Another enough, quick enough, just to give a Thomas Torres a contested look because you're expecting him not to be able to shoot lights out as like what he did in the third quarter. Poor pass recovered by Inigo. He gets it back. La a man-to-man -man defense here to start the fourth quarter. Escoto had a good look. Stepped in closer for a two. Uh, Ten points for Russell Escoto. Well, it's good to see Russell Escoto shooting that mid-range jumper with a lot of confidence. That time over the outstretched hand of Jason Perkins. Perkins for three. Too strong. Oh, ball last touched by Tamsi. Got a little nervous with Sargent behind him and failed to secure it before attempting to dribble. Wasted opportunity by the FEU right there. And a, a little bit of a luck for sa La Salle. That's too far out, even for a guy like Torres. And a good save there by uh, Roger Pugoy against the young rookie, Prince Rivero. And this is going to be a crucial stretch here for the Green Archers. So no Thomas Torres, no AVO, no Jeron Tang on the floor. And let's see, the offense is probably going to emanate from either Norbert Torres or Jason Perkins. Meanwhile, for FEU also, no Anthony Hargrove, no Mike Tolomia, no Matt Bello. They tried to go inside to Jose, but the long arms of Torres poking the ball away. Montalvo picked up by Inigo Perkins, blowing by Escoto, gets the foul Jason and the basket. Perkins. Jason Perkins has shown us in the past seasons that he's, he's a capable scorer capable of shooting from the outside or putting the ball on the floor. And his, his build is very deceiving. Mm -hmm. Jason Perkins, he may look like he packs a lot of heft, but he does move pretty well with oh, yes, or without the ball. Definitely, definitely. 
Back to a 10 point lead for De La Salle, 81 71. Bogoy there, being dared by Rivera to shoot from outside. You can see how far Rivera was yeah. sagged defensively. Well, Bogoy has the quickness advantage there against Prince Rivera. That is why Rivera was backing off a little bit, but Bogoy with the right idea, taking it strong against Prince Rivera. Escoto way off. Pick and roll between Montalvo and Perkins. They want to go down to Torres. Spots up. And it's good. What a soft touch for Norbert Torres. And what you like about LaSalle, very deliberate in terms of their execution on offense. Previous to that, going to Jason Perkins. That time, going to Norbert Torres. They know where their strengths are, and they're trying to maximize it. Perkins unable to box out the shooter. Escoto giving a fresh 24 para sa FEU. Let's go to Ina Omsiaco. Ten minutes, don't let up, play hard. Eric and Marco, these were the first words of Coach Junior Saler to the De La Salle Green Archers with hopes that they avoid any late game meltdowns that happened in the previous games. He also says that though they still have to pick up defensively as they let FEU score 13 points in the first five minutes of the last quarter and they still do need to work on not getting into early penalty, the Green Archers seem confident that they just need to keep doing what they're doing, follow the game plan and stay focused to secure this win. Eric and Marco? Thank you, Ina. Well, they shouldn't let up just because they have their biggest lead back at 12 points, 83-71. Uh, advice, the Juno Saulera, Pogoy missing at the line. Crucial free throws yep. at 7-19 left in the fourth. Yeah, and with Mike Tolomia and uh, Mac Bello and Anthony Hargrove getting ready to check in, you can be sure this is going to be a last push here for FU. They're going to try to dwindle this lead down probably to less than five points as we get closer to the end of this ball game. And there's a, In your foul, there's a no? foul. Oh, actually, what the referee called there is uh, Norbert Torres getting into the landing area of Roger Pogoy. The, the offensive player needs a place to land, and you're, you're going to have, as a defensive player, you have to give him that. That's correct. Nice turnaround by Rivero, but it was way short. Bello tapped it out of bounds. Babalik. Lasal ang bola. Lucky break there for the Green Archers. Almost a fast break for FEU. Double team on Sargent. 15 to shoot Perkins operating against Jose. Can't get it and a tap there by Bello. But Jose almost threw it away. Players on the floor, Bogoy is swarmed by Green Archers and a jump ball seems to be between Bogoy and Sargent. Seems like FEU just can't seem to get the ball into, you know, in, in their possession. That's correct, and uh, you also have to give a lot of credit to the defense of LaSalle, but again, this is what you like. Even in the preseason, teams diving for that loose ball, uh, they know what is at stake here. Prince Rivero getting caught in the middle of Jason Perkins and Raymar Jose. Let's go to Mitch Del Carmen. American Marco coach Nash is pleased to see that more of the momentum is coming from Mac Bello and Mike Tolomia, which is what he instructed in the huddle earlier. Para sa ngayon, gusto nga ni coach Nash na mag-focus ang koponan sa defensa, put more pressure on the passer, and stop the Mastores. Dagdag ni coach Nash na pahirapan pa rin nila ang Green Archers. Eric and Marco. Thank you, Mitch. Well, that's exactly the plan. That's what, that was, was what they're trying to do, Meadow. So far, they've been, they've been trading baskets with Nasal, and that's not going to do it. Well, if you're trailing well, by 11. Is, yeah, this is their opportunity without Thomas Torres, Jeron Tang, or ABO. They have to make stops and get baskets. And there it is. Dish by Tolomia, who averages five and a half assists per game, finds the cutting Anthony Hargrove for the basket and the foul. Well, Mike Tolomia has the advantage in terms of athleticism and also in terms of height against Kim Montalvo. Time taking advantage of that. But uh, Teng is off the bench and at the officials' table, getting ready to report back in para Salasal. Hargrove missing the bonus. Uh, 
And this is what was uh, in the report of Mish. Ball pressure here on the part of the FU Tamaraos. That time foul going on Mike Tolong as well. A little too much, too close, too, too tight for comfort. So, Vosotros, Teng, check in para kay Rivero and Sargent. With six minutes left in the game, Teng muscles his way inside. There will be a foul on Perkins. Teng wanted to take advantage of that matchup. He had Roger Pagoy guarding him. Uh, I think this is the first time during this afternoon he usually got Mac Bello matched up on him on defense. But here's that foul by Jason Perkins. There's a push or a, or a holding foul either way. The ball is going the other way. As, uh, Van Opsel checks in for Norbert Torres. So all the big guns, the Juno Sauler back in the game. Maybe to finish it off either with a winner. They will try to get that W, that's for sure. Just buying a little more time here for Thomas Torres. But as we say that, Thomas Torres getting ready to check in. So the strongest offensive five on the floor for LaSalle once Thomas Torres checks into the ball game. Thomas Torres for Kip Montalvo. So Kip Montalvo steps out, and with his 20 points, Thomas Torres checks back into the game. And right now here, FEU also having their best five on the floor because Raymar Jose has been playing stellar here in the Phil Oil Preseason Cup. But so far, Jose only with a point. Steal here by FEU should ignite their offense. Bogoy with an easy layup. Just a five-point deficit here for the Tamaraos. Defense really stepping up para sa FEU on Anthony Hargrove. Really taking it to heart, trying to deny Van Opstel. This is the earlier sequence. Perkins nalingat lang eh, nawala tuloy sa kanya yung bola. You have to give a lot of credit also to the defense of Raymar Jose on Perkins, even that far away from the basket, Jose was pressuring him. So, one of the reasons that na wala ni Perkins yung ano, yung bola. Thomas Torres misses from outside, but he gets the loose ball. Nobody, everybody forgot to box out the shooter again para sa FEU. Vosotros. Double team, Vosotros loses it, but fights back for it against Pugoy. And another jump ball situation involving Pugoy and a green archer. Good help defense there provided by Roger Pugoy. Getting the possession. Possession arrow going to the yellow shirts. So an opportunity to get this within a one possession ball game. Hargrove from outside. Yes! Anthony Hargrove! And that's a good play if Anthony Hargrove can hit that jumper consistently. It's going to be very hard to stop with Mac Bello and Mike Tolomia cutting into the paint. Defense is going to be forced to help out. Vosotros, difficult shot against Tolomia, but Teng keeps the ball alive para Salasal. And they want Van Opsel again on the post. They're a good denial by Hargrove this time. Perkins steps out to a three. Teng out-rebounds Tolomia. Second offensive board for Jaron Teng. And FEU is really concerned trying to close out on the perimeter. Even their big guys are closing out too much. But the offensive rebounds are going LaSalle's way. Perkins steps out and uh, Juno Soler Brings his twin towers oh, oh. in this the game. This is the first time we're going to see it this afternoon. Norbert Torres and AVO on the floor at the same time. 16 seconds on the climax shot clock. Well, Raymar Jose has been hounding uh, Perkins, and it's been bothering Perkins. Uh -huh. He has been ineffective in the last four minutes. And this is the most experienced five on the floor for FEU. Difficult shot for Tang, banging bodies inside the paint. So don't look now, Eric. It's just a three-point ball game here. FEU with a chance to tie or get it within one. Bogoy. Bello from the corner. In and out. 
Ball kept alive by Vosotros and tapped into the hands of Van Opsel. Lead pass, Teng. Ball momentarily lost by Teng, but he recovers. Oh, Van Opsel driving from 15 feet away from the basket, almost lost it. Thomas Torres from outside. <laughs> and that's what we were talking about. Oh, FEU relying on the goal. fact that Thomas Torres won't shoot at the same click, clip that he did in the third quarter. A little more aggressive also on the defensive end is FEU. Inigo coming in. Barakay Nash, Rasena replacing Pogoy. But they've got a two-point guard now, itong FEU. Let's see how their offense develops with 3.19 remaining in the fourth. Foul on Anthony Hargrove. Playing much better defense to see Hargrove against Van Opsel here in the fourth quarter. Shot clock, 20 seconds. 20 seconds to shoot for LaSalle. And Avio has really gotten the better of Anthony Hargrove so far in the post here. Tank dumps it down to Torres. Thomas Torres from outside, and he connects again. It was just a matter of time. And Coach Alan Kaidik pumping his fist after that three-point shot. A foul this time on Gerald Tang as uh, Mac Bello tried to post him up. Here is the double team in Yigo gambling and losing big time. Thomas Torres, 23 huge points. Sabi siguro ni Achi Inigo, ginawa akong target shooting nito si Thomas Torres. He has been, he has had the unfortunate luck yeah. of being the guy who has had to close out on Thomas Torres after that double. It's a tough gamble. Do you want a, you want a, a two points from Norbert Torres or you want a three? It was supposed to have been just a one-point lead for Lasalle, but because of that three-point shot to Torres, it's back to a four-point advantage for the Green Archers. 2.41 remaining. Vosotros has struggled from beyond the arc. One of the best three-point shooters in this tournament. Nice block by Norbert Torres on Mac Bello. Mac Bello, a little tentative there on offense. That's the reason why the Green Shirts were able to get back in transition. Tolomia, catch and shoot. Yes! Mike Tolomia! Mike Tolomia showing us the ability to catch and shoot off the screen and off the inbound. And that is with shirts being grabbed, pushing, shoving, all happening during the screen. What a great talent, Mike Tolomia. Vosotros has, has yet to knock in a three. Here's Norbert Torres. There's going to be a foul. There was a hook on Norbert Torres, but I guess um, blocking will be called on Carl Brian Cruz as well. Very physical play. FEU defense getting a lot of headache from this two-headed monster in Tinatawag Nating. Twin towers to LaSalle. So LaSalle going to the post on either side with AVO or Norbert Torres and creating opportunities to score from both ends. Two-point lead for LaSalle. Torres at the line, missing the first of two. Remember, FEU has not lost in this tournament. They are 6-0. LaSalle is at 4-2 and, and seeded number 7. FEU is a much higher seed at 2. Last, Last two minutes brought minutes. to you by Haynes. Chance to tie or take the lead for FEU. They go to Hargrove and isolate against Van Opsel. Hargrove can't get it to fall. Good defense there from AVO, just getting his hands up in front of Anthony Hargrove. Now a chance to extend the two-point lead for LaSalle. Van Opsel on the post against Hargrove. The pass, open look, short. Parakay Teng and the rebound into the hands of Tolomia. Almost lost it. Just a bit unfortunate there for Jeron Teng. Nice Prop green by Cruz. Oh, and Tolomia gives FEU the lead with a huge three. 87-86 prompting 
Juno Saulev to call a timeout with 117 remaining here in the fourth. This game going down the wire quarterfinal matchup between the number two seeded FEU Tamaraos against the number seven seeded De La Salle Green Archers. 87 86 FEU, a team that trailed by as much as 12 points and got buried by the seven three pointers of Thomas Torres, but somehow recovers and takes the lead with that big three drained by Mike Tolomia. And take a look at this very simple play, like what you were saying, Marco. And this is great communication, non-verbal communication there. Carl Brian Cruz knowing Mike Tolomia has that in his arsenal. Ball screen in transition. Thomas Torres did not get wind of it. Wide open three for Mike Tolomia. And you know you have to give a lot of credit to FEU despite the third quarter onslaught 27 points from LaSalle five three-pointers from Thomas Torres in the third quarter they stuck with it they stuck with their defense packing the paint uh, and then just biding their time slowly chipping off of that lead at LaSalle and then now finally taking the advantage taking the lead here in the last one minute of the ball game man-to-man -man defense here para sa FEU seven to shoot Perkins out it again by Raymar Jose. Perkins missing, Perkins getting it back. Fresh 24, finds Van Opstel for the easy two. The lead back with the Green Archers. And it has been the offensive rebounding of LaSalle that has given them the advantage here in this ball game. 42 seconds in counting left in regulation. A smaller Vosotros on Tolomia, nine to shoot for FEU. Tolomia steps back, a three on the way is off. Van Opsal is hounded and fouled. And possession arrow. Oh, it's going to be a foul. Yeah, there's a foul, I think, on Raymar Jose. But a great move. A step back three. That's just the athleticism of Mike Tolomia. He has hit that many times in the past. That time, just a little bit off. Good challenge, though, on the part of Alan Vosotros. Substitution here. Jose and Inigo will sit down. And Matt Bello, Roger Pogoy will check back in. And Anthony Hargrove crowding the free throw area. A bit of intimidation. Oh, uh, It's going to be two free throws here for AVO, who is a 62. Yep, 62% free throw shooter. Yeah, all the very important first goes in para kay Arnold Van Opsel. Huge relief for Juno Sauler. Uh, Alan K. Dick and Jun Limpot in the background. Nash Rosella on the other side. Still barking out instructions. 27.6 seconds remaining. Doesn't matter if this goes. There is still a three-point shot mm -hmm. available para sa FEU to tie. And uh, Coach Nash still has two timeouts left, so he can definitely move the ball up the floor. And he will use... One of two. And we will listen in to the huddle of Nash Lasala. Let's see if he draws a three or a quick two with still plenty of time remaining. Coach Nash Rosella, very calm and composed here 
calling the regular one play and it's going to be coming from Mike Tolomia. You're going to make your best playmaker make that play. It's going to be a two-man game between Mike Tolomia after this inbound. Anthony Hargrove probably give him a ball screen. Russell Escoto is in for his outside shooting. He's going to be stationed at the corner for that open three. But no problem with getting an easy two. And there is the two. Still a long way to go. 20 seconds. FEU can still foul. Force Asal to hit it from the free throw line. How much time? That's the question. Will FEU allow? Well, there is your answer. With 12.2 seconds, Tolomia tackles Busotros for the foul. Not really the guy you'd want to foul if you're FEU, but no choice there for, for FEU because Amon Busotros was going to hold on to that basketball. 75% free throw shooter here in the Philo tournament. First is good. And if Posotros knocks the second one in, big question is, will FEU, they still have a timeout, draw a play for a three or a two? Well, that's going to be a big decision, but FEU is going to call their last timeout here. And let's see what Coach Nash has to say. seconds to go no timeouts left for him so he won't have the opportunity to move the ball up the floor in case of free throws made from LaSalle so they could try to go for the best open three that they have you have Mac Bello you have Roger Pogo you have Mike Tolomia who can hit the three-pointer well let's see with 12.2 seconds remaining how this will draw up there's a screen Bello open three on the way off the glass, voila, and then callers the loose ball. A quick foul by Tolomia with 4.1 seconds remaining. And Tank knocks in even one of the two free throws. That is a wrap. Well, that was the reason why Mac Bello was the one who set that ball screen instead of Anthony Hargrove because he has that three pointer in range. Unfortunately, it was challenged well by Jason Perkins. So nothing left for FU to do but foul. The rebounder, which was Jaron Tang. So Jaron Tang is going to be put to the test once again. Question is, Marco, was it a little too early on the shot clock? Should they have gone for the final shot? Well, I think they took the opportunity that was theirs. Jer uh, Mac Bello had that slight opening. If they had waited for a few more seconds, that opening probably would not have been available. So they took the best opportunity they had and unfortunately they didn't go for them. So Tang knocks in the first of two, making it a two-possession game right now at 93-89. And this is just icing on the cake. Two for two for Tang. And at the buzzer, a hard-fought win by La Salle University. Juno Saulel walking over to FEU, shaking the hand of Nash Rosella. And great quality ball game we've witnessed here between two teams, two final four UAAP teams, able to execute on offense just that FU was not able to get the stops when they needed to. But uh, you cannot fault FU for their gallant effort. Went 6-0 and here in the Phil Oil Tournament, except that they lost to LaSalle. A better team this afternoon was LaSalle, able to execute. And uh, of course, that three-point barrage by Thomas Torres in the third quarter Five three-pointers in the third, add a couple more in the fourth quarter. Really sealed the deal for the Green Archers. And that's the final score, 94. De La Salle University, 89. 
FEU Tamaraus. Uh, despite the 18 point output of Mac Bello, 15 from Hargrove, 22 from, Mac Tolomia, uh, from uh, Mike Tolomia, was just not enough for the undefeated team to keep their winning streak going. Uh, Pure Food Standard Juicy Hot Dog, best player from Pure Food Standard Juicy Hot Dog. May mga bagay na mahirap ipaliwanag basta alam mo, perfect. Uh, and our best player is with Ina Ongsiako, Thomas Torres. First of all, Thomas, how do you feel that the big lead that we had for the most part third quarter going into the fourth was because of you and your three points? Uh, actually, I didn't feel anything because for me and the team, um, for us, gusto namin manalo lang. Um, so, hinanap lang namin kung saan yung mga mismatches and kung saan yung open shots. Do not, do not, yun yung pinuntahan namin. So, I guess, shoot naman yung mga three pointers ko. So, I just have to keep shooting those, please. Now, how did you and your teammates get back from that big lead to the Tamaraus even leading for a while? Um, well, nagstick lang kami sa game plan namin. Uh, and hindi dapat uh, magulo. I mean, last game na, we just have to give our best. Tulungan sa court and yun, yung, we won, we won, panalo kami, so yun, yun. Before we go, do you want to say hi to anyone? Again, again, again. Before we go, do you want to say hi to anyone? Uh, I want to say hi to all the LaSalle fans for always uh, supporting us. I hope you guys will be there until the end, so thank you. Uh, okay, I will say hi to Mika Rosales, Gio Inchong, Bea Flores, Tita Gina, Valbuena, Mark Eblano, Carlo Grau. Thank you, Thomas, and definitely congratulations on your big win. There you have it. That was our Pure Foods Tender Juicy Hot Dog best player, Thomas Torres. Eric and Marco? Thank you, Ina. And Thomas Torres saying he didn't feel anything. So it's kind of true. You get unconscious when you shoot like that. Five for five in the third quarter. Para kay Thomas Torres to finish with 23 big points para sa De La Salle. And they move on to the semifinals and meet up with SWU and defeat uh, and send home the FU Tamaraus. Yeah, that is correct. Unconscious was the word. And again, you have to give credit to the championship experience of this De La Salle squad, like what Thomas Torres said. They just stuck to their system, looked for the mismatches, which was in the post, and then they, they let their post offense feed to their perimeter offense. And uh, that is one of the reasons why they were able to get the lead back despite the uh, short lead taken by FU in that fourth quarter. La Salle did not lose composure and then pull it off in the end. And our fourth and final quarter final matchup coming up. The San Beda Red Lions seated number four, taking on the fifth seated National University Bulldogs. Dito po sa ABS-CBN Sports in Action. Thanks to our director, Raul De Ocampo, our producer, Ada Bayuga, for Ina Siako, Mitchell Carmen, my partner, Marco Benitez. I'm Eric Timan. Thank you for watching and stick around for our second game today at the Seyo ng ABS-CBN Sports.